Yo, yo, slow feet don't eat. Guys, look, we're back. Going to make this one interesting tonight. I'm excited about this one. Listen, I got I got a special guest for you guys tonight, all right? This guy is a great guy. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm not going to do for him, all right? Because I know this guy personally, all right? We, we've done business together for, I think, seven, eight years, all right? So what I'm not going to do, this guy's accomplishments, if I wanted to go through all of his accomplishments, we take up the entire hour. So I don't, I don't want to do that. All right. So this is what I can tell you 110% about this guy. We've done a lot of business together. An incredible, incredible guy. Uh, he's going to share some special stuff with you guys tonight about how to take a look at small multifamily real estate opportunities, duplexes, triplexes, quads, and how you can take those deals and create wholesale opportunities. But one of the biggest things that I've found from coaching over 400 students is the Achilles heel of a lot of people is one in particular thing. And what that is, is people don't know how to properly evaluate these deals. So we may get into a case study. We may just get into a bunch of meat and, and how to evaluate these deals and what they look like. I'm going to let him drive a lot of the conversation. This guy, I don't know how many units this guy owns, 80 something, I think, uh, the last that I heard. All right. Uh, shout out to everybody in the comments. I see you guys in here. I'm going to go ahead and add my guest tonight, Jerome Myers, to the stream. Guys, you know when the stream starts, got to turn the head backwards or forwards and get locked in. All right. So, Jerome, what's up, man? How you doing? Bro, it's been hey, it's a minute. My brother, it's good to see you. Listen. First and foremost, welcome to the Slow Feet Money Podcast. So this is a podcast, you know, it's not really a podcast, right? Uh, I started this a few weeks ago, and the intent when I started it is I wanted to highlight people who are brand new to the business and having success. Now, let me clarify, I'm on the search, not brand new to the business, all right? Uh, I don't know what you hear, but a long time ago, we took the red pill. You see the shirt. We got the red pill. All right. Shout out to the Nate All right. He took the red pill. He bet on himself. He's better on me multiple times. This guy's a business partner of mine. He's dealt with my BS over the years. Bad deals, good deals. Look, this is a great guy. I'm, ex I'm excited. I'm going to tell you why I'm excited. I'm excited because I'm going to learn tonight, too. All right. I've done a lot of these deals. But this this guy's like some sort of multi-family ninja or something. I, I don't know how he's learned all this stuff so fast, how he's got all these units, he's in all these deals. I talked to some of my money people. He got I, I, I don't know what's going on. So I'm I'm pumped up. I'm excited. All right. Uh listen, uh Jerome, you got an echo on your mic. I don't know if you got you're playing on something else. Uh, but we gotta get your echo out. Uh, he's going to get the echo straight, guys. We'll give it a second. All right. Listen, the man, the myth, the legend. Guys, listen, you might have followed this guy on IG before. I'm going to get him to shout his IG out. But this this guy, I mean, I'm, I'm, listen, let me, let me tell you something about this guy. I don't know for how many years. I don't even know what this guy looked like. Never even <laughs> All right. We, we were doing business together. I didn't even know what he looked like. All right. So now this guy smiling on camera. He's, he's took the red pill. He's, he's out here. In real estate. Jerome, listen, man, break, break it down. Let's, we're going to hold this to an hour. We're going to hold this to an hour. And here's the deal. If we got to do a part two, we're going to do a part two. All right. Man, whatever the people need, man. Whatever, whatever the people, the people need. need. We're both for the culture. We both love real estate. We love teaching people real estate. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna tap in and we're gonna get into it, and we're gonna see what's going on, man. Jerome, it's good to see you, my brother. Man, the you, I'm here, I made it, I've arrived, guys. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. Appreciate hey, look, it. I love it. So, so tell me real quick, man. Like, and again, we can't run through all your accomplishments, man. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. Black belt, your MEP, PPP, DD. I mean, all these things. Credentials. The credentials are crazy. All right, the link the LinkedIn bio is crazy. All yeah. right, what? Tell me who is Jerome Meyer? Yeah, I'm a corporate America dropout, just plain and simple. Uh, before I left corporate, I built a twenty million dollar vision for a Fortune five hundred and fifty, 
and got the opportunity to lay people off two years in a row. And it's like, I'm not doing this. And so I did it the first time, got the phone call on Christmas Eve. He said, look, we're going to lay them off. You should do it because you got to build a team for the next year. I said, I'm not really cut out for this. I don't really want to do it. But, you know, you go back to the playground. Like, you're going to pick your team. You're the captain. You got to pick your team. So I did it for the first year. Promised myself I would never do it again. Fast forward to Thanksgiving. He asked me to do the same thing again. Became a corporate America dropout. Ran back to real estate. We've been doing some things. And I was like, okay, I, I can go do that. And you're the first person I came to when we looked at that 23 in Richmond. Yeah. It's like, let, let's get this thing done. You're like, ah, I don't know. So we had to put it <laughs> on the shelf. Um, then, you know, we figured it out a few months later. And, you know, it's crazy. You know, as I go around and I tell this story, um, the one thing that always comes back up is how'd you get your first deal done? And the truth of the matter is when the guy told me he was going to do the deal, he didn't want to do the deal with me. And he tried to go do it on his own. And then he came back to you and he's like, yeah. I'm only doing the deal if Jerome does the deal. And so, hey, I mean, let's just keep fact. it full circle, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. It, listen, that's a Fendi fact. All right, we call those Fendi facts over here. So, nah, look, man, I, I said I'm not doing the deal unless Jerome Myers is involved in the deal. And, and here we are, man. It's, it's been a beautiful journey, and I, I appreciate you sincerely. I know you know that. Uh, but I, I want to say that publicly, man, because one thing I believe in is we got to give people their flowers while they're still here. So I want to tell you I appreciate everything that you've done for me, everything that you continue to do. And we're going to inspire people. We're going to motivate the people. And we're going to talk to them about how to properly – do this business look i didn't even turn the i didn't even turn the lights on today because hey. i said i said man i gotta make sure all the light is on jerome myers sure, man. this guy man. he's phenomenal i gotta i gotta make sure that people are here my guy so we're gonna talk about a lot of different things tonight i know we might get into a deal that you've done yeah. but let's 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 jump into it so one of the biggest things that i deal with one of the biggest things that i hear from speaking engagements my students is Chris, how about, I found this lead, it's a duplex. Yeah. I don't know what to do. How do I evaluate it? How do I create my offer? Do I look at it like that, right? And so this is a specialty of yours, right? Yeah. So I don't know if you wanna say how many units you have, so I'm not gonna ask you that, all right? Yeah. But I know you got a couple, I know you got a couple, all right? We, we doing okay. <laughs> doing all right. So if you're looking at a duplex, OK, what is the first thing you're thinking if you got a duplex opportunity in front of you? What's one of the first things that you're thinking? Yeah, I, I'm personally I'm wholesaling those. Right. We're, we're not doing anything with residential loans anymore. You know, we I, I will talk about this a little bit. We, we're working on 120 unit development here in Greensboro and we're going ground up on that, taking six acres and, and bringing a full circle. So we're not focused on the smaller deals. But I will tell anybody who takes action on the information tonight, you can build a multi-million dollar business because there's nobody running this lane. I've told a few people to do it. Nobody's taking action. And I'm going to give you everything that you need tonight in order to go and be successful at this thing. And all you have to do is take what you've been learning in the U with your cash buyers and put it together with these new deals. And you'll be able to do some things pretty impressive in addition to start building your own portfolio, because if you can grab these things at the right price, you can make them cash flow in a big way. Absolutely, man. I think something that's important, something that took me far too long to learn and understand on my own was that cash flow is truly king. You know, um, you guys know my story. 2017 on the brink of bankruptcy, trying to figure it out trying to build it back, put it back together. Jerome was instrumental in helping me do those things. Uh, and, and one of the things that I, that I think is extremely important to understand, and this is what Jerome is going to help you guys with tonight, is that it's not always, guys, you're focusing sometimes on singular lanes, singular verticals inside of wholesaling. Yeah. You're focusing on just one type of deal. I've talked with my students before about uh, adding land deals to your repertoire, right? Now we're talking about adding multifamily, things like that to your repertoire. This is how you grow a business in, in a wholesale business, rental business, whatever the case might be. This is how you go from doing one or two deals a month or no deals a month to adding things to your repertoire. And now you're able to do five, 10, 15, 20 deals a month yeah. from understanding different components and verticals that you can add 
uh, into your business, right? So let's let's use an example, all right? So uh, let's say we've got a duplex. Uh, how are you going to evaluate that? Because you're not, are you going to look at it the same way you look at single family? Like, how are you going to evaluate that deal to know if it's an opportunity? So at, at the core level, it is still single family, right? Yep. It, it's just at the foundation. It's going to get evaluated by stuff around it. But there's some other components that allow you to do this a little bit quicker. You can go through and just, so in my market, and everybody's got different markets. In my market, I know that a two-bedroom, one-bath unit, whether it's a duplex, triplex, or quad, is good for anywhere. Retail is good anywhere from forty to 55000 That's retail. Even if it needs to be fixed up, if you knock off 5000 to do the fix-up, you're in that range. And so I can go in and I know what, what my spread I want, what, what I want my spread to be. And that's my, my wholesale fee. Right? Yep. And so we can go in, it's boom. Here, here's what rent is. And here's another way to do it for them. You can go on rental meter. You can use free rental meter. You don't yep. even have to get the pro edition. You can figure out what the rents are. And you can do 1.25%. Divide by 1.25%. And you're going to be at a number where you can take that to somebody who is a lazy, I call them lazy, maybe they're not lazy, a lazy property owner. Well, right? so here's, here's what I call them. They're like the corp, they're the old you, all right? They're the corporate property owner, all right? They don't know about wholesaling. They don't know about this and that. They're looking for rental property opportunities to help free them for their nine to five. Get that, what they call those things when you got... You corporate guys who make a lot of money or used to be corporate and made a lot of money, I ain't going to put it out there, all right? They, what do they call that? The golden handcuffs? Oh, that, yeah. I have those. It? Yeah. So, look, those guys are trying to buy rental properties, and they're, they're, they're paying a lot of money for those deals, truth be told. And so what, what Jerome is saying, and Jerome, what market are you in? I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina. All right. So he dropped a bar on you guys that I want to point out because it's in extremely important, all right? What he told you was that he knows his market like the back of his hand. All, day. all right. This is, this is important. All right. You, I, I talk about this with my students. I'm going to say it publicly. You have to study your real estate market. Whatever market that you're active in, you should be checking the activity in that market on a daily basis. On my market, I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Every single day, and I've done this for 10 years, every single day, I check the active, pending, and sold transactions for the entire market that I work. All right. And why that's important is because see, Jerome knows what a duplex trades for in Greensboro right now. And so when those lead opportunities come in, he's able to have an active conversation with a homeowner and know exactly what the going rate is for a two one unit on a duplex. Right. Right now. I, I don't have to go check anything. Right. And that's that's where you get to it, because you can get the LOI if you're doing an LOI. You can get the contract right to him right now. And Chris, you know, when you first started doing this with single family homes, I thought it was crazy. But right. when you're making offers sight unseen, right. you just know what the back end is, right? And if you get in there and you find out that it's a mess, then of course you make some adjustments to the contract price, but you sure. can get a deal in a contract without going through it. You don't need to see the leases. You don't have to go through any of that stuff up front and yep. so, because you know what your back end is. And then you just work back from there. You, you, work, you, you back your fee out, right? Guys, it's the same concept that I teach you guys when it comes to single family, right? We say we, we don't care about 70% loan value and how much of the repair cost. And look, we don't. I was a contractor. Jerome knows this. I was a contractor in a former life. Trust me, you don't need to try to figure out how to go down that road. All right. I'm telling you guys, and Jerome is as well, the simple, easy way to yeah. figure this type of stuff out. Chris ain't a contractor. He ain't had no tools, y'all. He got a truck. He ain't had no tools. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I'm the only Class A contractor Jerome knows. I never had a tool belt. Never had never. a tool belt. All right? I don't even know where you buy the tool belt out. Maybe Home Depot, Lowe's. I don't know. All right? But, guys, here's the deal. You have to study your market. All right? Now, everybody's got a different way to study their market. I think something important to point out. Jerome, if, if you were if you were wanting somebody watching this right now and needed to start studying your market tomorrow, because a lot of these people, truth be told, aren't studying their market like they should. Yeah. But we want to fix that tonight, though. We want to tell them how they can actively start monitoring and paying attention to what's happening in their market. So when see, here's the power. So you can talk to somebody on the phone 
I can call Jerome with a duplex deal or a triplex deal in Greensboro right now, and he can make me a live offer over the phone based on what I tell him the condition of the units are, right because now. he knows his market. So, Jerome, how would you go about figuring out, understanding, or knowing your market? Yeah, before we go there, let's slide this one in. I want yeah. everybody that's on, I want you to go to your, however you look up whatever's on the internet, like the multiple listing service. So you can go to Zillow, you can go wherever. I want you to search for duplex, triplex, quad. I want to see how many listings there are, right? And so for everybody seeing this movement, everybody says, I want to get in multi, I want to get in multi. There is no supply. So if you become the source for this, again, we're going to set you up for a multi-million dollar business tonight. So with that said, I think there's a couple of ways you can do it. One, you can get a realtor to put you on their list if you don't have access to MLS on your own. And just tell them you want every duplex, triplex, and quad that comes on the market sent to you. You don't care what area it's in. You just want it in your email box. And realtors will do that for nothing with the hope that on the backside, they'll get some opportunities to list with you. I think another way to do it is to invest in some software. Uh, Chris, y'all are looking up stuff through different um, softwares. You got list source, you got all these different, please, you trade. can see what yeah. traded, yep. right? You can see what's traded. And the great thing about, and all right, I don't want to give them this, but I'll give it to them anyway. The great thing about these duplexes, triplexes, and quads is sometimes they're built and there's only one or two in a neighborhood. And so you can go get comps from nicer neighborhoods to boost yours up. And so I, if we talk about the case study tonight, we'll talk about how we were able to get the value up because there weren't any comps in the area in the past few years. And so You're that right you, there. You came on the night fully loaded, man. You, you're dropping some gems right now, all right? You, you, you said you wanted it for your students, so I mean, yeah, I, I want I want to make sure we give them. We want to give everybody everything. We're not holding anything back for you guys. Here, here's something important that Jerome just brought up. So I see this question all the time, Jerome. All right, hey Chris, I found a duplex. I got this lead. All right, but there's no other duplexes around. All right, and so Jerome just told you exactly what you can do with these. So you can you can you can work outside of the tr traditional comp parameters, so to speak, and you can extend your reach out to find other comps inside of that zip code that'll fit that that that'll f a comp against that duplex. And another thing that I'll tell you guys, all right, is it also important when you're doing numbers on something like this or evaluating it to take the total square footage of that duplex, all right? Because it, it, and we're talking about a lot of times in cities and stuff like that. A lot of times what you'll see is a single family property that's been converted into a duplex. All right. Yeah. And it, it originally it was a single family house. So you got to be able to get a, a lead like that. And you have to look at it from two different lenses. Right. All right. Does this make sense numbers wise to convert it back and sell it to a flipper or a renovator as a single family or as a flip? Or does it make sense to look at it the same way Jerome would look at it? Right. And it, you know what Jerome is funny about this? is that this shows the, the two different ways we look at real estate, right? So Jerome is always, always cash flow, multifamily, rental, like that's his thing, right? And guys, you know me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get paid sometimes, right? So I'm wholesaling, I'm flipping, doing different things. If the rental deal makes sense, obviously I definitely want to keep it as a rental, but those are two lenses, right, Jerome, that you can look at these deals and that's how you maximize your deal profit opportunity. Well, I mean, you got to have multiple exit strategies regardless of what you're doing, right? But I, I'll tell you, just like I tell everybody else, man, a single family home ain't good for nothing but flipping it, right? I don't, I don't believe in holding single. Break that, hold on, break that rentals. down, break that down. Bro, listen, single family home is for somebody to live in, right? Okay. You got to get into the multis because if you're not in the multis, you're at zero percent occupancy or a hundred percent occupancy, period. Right. You got the multis. You have multiple people who can pay rent and there's nothing fun about writing a check for a mortgage if you put debt on a property ever. And so yeah. if you can have somebody to offset that. And this is why I like the larger multifamilies. Right. I can go in and I can do my flip project and have people cover all of the expenses and the mortgage while I force the appreciation on the property like that. That's my game. And so let's say you go get a quad. You got three units. Well, I, we're going to talk about this eight unit we got because it, it was two quads side by side, right? Right. 
We bought it. Seven of the eight were occupied. We had one vacant. We spent three thousand dollars to renovate the one vacant while everybody else was paying rent. And then we ran it on up, right? So we turned on the extra revenue from that. I think we bought it where they were renting at like four hundred, four fifteen. We renovated that one, rented it at six hundred, and then we just keep bumping everybody up. And then if somebody moves out, boom, we renovate it, bring that one up. But we got people paying the mortgage along the way. So we got the cash flow jumping off and it, we can use that money, the all the profit above whatever we have on the mortgage to put into the rehab, you know, force the appreciation, the, force the appreciation on the NOI. But the thing that I hated about flipping, because, you know, you know how I got turned away when I tried to do the first <laughs> apartment deal. Right. All yeah. 10 of them said, you're crazy. We're not giving you a million dollars to go do that deal. Right. Things change. But the thing that got me was when I was flipping those houses, all the money was going the wrong way. The Flip wrong eight. way. Flipping is a cold game. It's a cold, um, cold game. I, I mean, I'm paying contractors. I'm paying hard money. I'm paying. I mean, it's just nothing's coming back. I'm trying to get to a close. And then going out. Yeah. Trying to get to the closest. So, I mean, I just say that to say, like, you get a quad, you got three people in the quad, you got a vacant unit, you go ahead and renovate that, bump the rent, and then either people's leases come up for renewal, you can bump them then, or somebody moves up, moves out, you can renovate the unit and, and bump that one up too. And this is the part that I think is amazing for wholesalers, right? If you come in and you put a duplex, triplex, or quad under contract, and you can show that hey they are below market rent there's an opportunity for you to renovate force the appreciation by increasing the rents because hey it's renting at 500 but it should be renting for 650. you can show them that right we just talked about rental meter so you jump on rental meter here's market rent for this area here's what we found out from the seller when we we're going through due diligence this is what the leases say all right there's a 150 dollars gap on this property oh man well what do you have to do in order to get the hundred and fifty dollars? Hey, and Jerome, let me jump in if you don't mind, real yeah. quick, guys. What Jerome is telling you is the power of doors, all right, and the power and the opportunity of increasing the property value based on the increase of rents over time. And, and I'm not, t I'm not saying it has to be a short or long period of time. You might get into a deal and turn a unit within three, four, six months. And now that prop that property may have rented for four hundred dollars a month. Now it's rent for six hundred dollars a month. And so, okay. so, so what you got to understand is, see, the immediate thought is, you know, because here's the totem pole of real estate, right? You get into single family, then you then you're, you're at some point you're going to start looking at multifamily, right? What we're trying to get you guys to see is you can look at these things from the beginning both ways, and no you question. should be taking your leads and evaluating the leads as a wholesaler and saying to yourself, all right, should I keep this deal as cash flow or should I wholesale this deal for capital to continue to put inside of my business? But I want you guys to, to understand there's two lenses, right? There's the lens of how you guys traditionally look at deals. Hey, I got a lead and I'm confident against another entire property. All right. Numbers on multifamily, when you're looking at doors, you, you can, you're going to derive your value from the rent, right? And, and Jerome, this is what you're saying, right? Is you can you can create value, the value will be created rather from the rent itself, and that will then force the appreciation. That's what makes this strategy so powerful, whether you're wholesaling it or keeping it, right? Without question, Chris. I don't. I mean, the chat's not going crazy, man. Are they are they getting value out of this or what, man? I mean, are they <laughs> understand? Are we talking over their head? This is what I need you to do for me, right? Uh, the debate is coming on soon. All right, we want to. We got to. Somebody wants to see the debate in here. All right, I got Max and Nas. They going at eight. My guys, my brothers. So here's what I need you guys to do. If you guys are understanding this, if this is making sense for you, if you're getting game from this, I see we got like seventy something people on right now. I need you to let me know in the comments that you guys are learning and getting game from this because this is powerful, powerful stuff that we're talking about. Man, I don't want to talk. Uh, I, I got the. I got this curse of knowledge, bro. Like we do this pretty heavy. So I just want to make sure that people are getting something out of this because I don't want to waste their time. Right. I see it. I see okay. it. Okay. Okay. They're writing. They're writing. Okay. 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 
I just want to make sure. They're showing up. They're showing up. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Jerome, let me let me ask you a question, man. Maybe let's talk about. I think it'd be cool to case study this triplex. Yeah, let's do it. Because right. the end buyer got some value out of this. I made money. He's going to make big money. So let me ask you a question about this deal. So for, first of all, how did you find this triplex deal? Boom. So direct mail. All the same. When I tell you guys, everything that you're doing to find houses, you can do to find these small multis, right? And so I sent out the mailer. And the crazy part is I mailed him on something else. Right. And really? for those people who are out there, right, you're mailing houses. And if you're not asking them if they own something else other than the property that you're talking, you sent the mailer on or you called on, you're missing a real opportunity. So this guy, he inherited a duplex, a triplex and a single family from his dad. Um, and his mom's still alive, but he's the executor of the estate. And so we sat down and he, I, I called him about the, the single family. And he said, yeah, uh, I got this other. Said, you got anything else? Yeah, I got a duplex. I got a triplex. Well, let's go check them out. Let me see what's going on. And we pulled up on a triplex. It was all brick. Roof was probably 10 or 15 years old. So it was in pretty good shape. Not in the best part of town, but not in a bad part of town. And so we started having the conversation. I was like, uh, well, what do you want for all of them? Right. You right. Know, I'm, I'm going to go big. What do you want for all of them? And he said, well, blah, 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 blah. He's like, I can't sell all my cash flow. That was his thing. He wanted to keep some cash flow and get a nice little payday. And so he brought me the mortgage statements. He was he was about it. He's like, here's what I owe on these. So I need to be at about this. Let me, let me pause you real quick. Yeah. When people are talking to people who own some of these multifamilies and whether you're trying to wholesale it, buy for cash flow, whatever, let's give the people this. What do they need to ask the owner for Boom. to properly understand the deal? Boom. So I think off the cuff, you don't have to ask for anything because everything you need, if you understand your market is already there, you know, other after you know what the unit mix is, right? Is it two bedroom, one bedroom and how many baths? After you know that you can go find out what market rent is. And then back into what that back end is worth for that end buyer. But, you know, what that end buyer is going to ask you for, they're going to want to know, can I see the leases? What do the leases say? Our real, people quick, real quick, guys, if you don't do anything else tonight, you need to write this shit down. All right. Here we go. I'm All about right, to so give it to him. I know. Like, I know. Because I, I see this question, Jerome, all the time. All right. We're about to tell you exactly what you need to make sure you got right and tight. All right. What do they say? Cross the T's, dot the I's. We're going to tell you what you need to make sure that you do when you look at multifamily real estate. Again, whether you're going to wholesale it, keep it, get it on a finance, sub, whatever. All right. Proof is in the pudding, right, Jerome? That's, so that's leases, leases, number one. They need to ask for the leases, right? Boom. Lease is the number one. Number two is I need your financials for the last 12 months. I need to know how much you collected. I need to know what you spent on expenses. And it's not so much for you as much as it is for the person that you're selling this property to on the back end. Because they're going to ask you, hey, how's the property doing? Are they paying rent? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. So are they are they paying rent? Look, I got I got one person. And I, this is from Facebook. They don't have StreamYard set up. Guys, go set up StreamYard so I know who you are. They say, can we have weekly, bi-weekly chat with Jerome? All right. Man, this is appreciated. Appreciate Look at the love. Love. It's, it's a lot of love in here. Love. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, Jerome, I'm going to – guys, listen, I'll, I'll say it to this. If you're one of my students, because we've got some people on here that aren't my students. If you're one of my students, this is what I can tell you. I can't commit for Jerome. But what I will tell you is I will be on Jerome's back, all right, I will be on drones back to get him to pour value into my students about multifamily real estate and how you can utilize this the same way that I have, the same way that he has to yeah. absolutely explode your, your, your business. So uh, so leases, uh, deferred maintenance is one, right? Well, uh, that, 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 you know, that gets into figuring out the rehab budget. And so I'm right. not overly interested in that. And, you have to 
what I'll say is you need the financials, you need the leases. Those two things will be what the end buyer is going to want to look at. And you just want to do a couple of things. You want to make sure that they're collecting rent. Not they got leases and people are just there, but they're actually collecting revenue. Because if not, then you're buying a problem. And this is the biggest challenge which you, that you have with a multifamily that's occupied that you don't have with a single family is you got to schedule the tours. You got right. to you got to worry about people who are just sitting in the units and not paying any rent. Those things are what people are most apprehensive about. And so you're looking for leases that are expired or getting ready to expire so that the new owner can come in and do what they want to do, whether they want to clear the property out and renovate or renovate when leases expire. So and that's, that's, that's super important. We've been through that uh, in, in, in a deal together, right? Painful. That uh, took a little left turn, right? Because we, we had uh, 23 units, right? With the, with the expectation that we had a partially full building and we were going to renovate, what, four units, I think it was at a time uh, of the 23 until, uh, and, and we were going to use the cash flow from the existing tenants to cover our mortgage, which was not a small mortgage, right? And we were going to use that to cover the mortgage uh, as we worked through the construction. But shortly after we started, uh, what happened, Jerome? All the yeah. tenants disappeared. <laughs> Everybody well, they didn't disappear. We 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 had some strategy change where we right. did some evictions. <laughs> some people stopped paying rent. You know, you walk into this thing and it blows up. It's a bomb with a short fuse. But yeah. you know, it is what it is, and you just got to see it through to, to the end. And I think that's the big thing when you are um, in one of these deals. It's not it's not tiddly winks, guys. Right? Like we are. Buy, we're, this is really investing if you buy it. But if you're wholesaling, then it's all about the marketing. And again, so I see somebody dropped in. We need the rent rolls. De Deandra, Deandra, I don't want to mess up your name. Deandra, Deandra. Deandra, you don't have to get the rent rolls. The rent rolls don't matter. You want the leases and the trailing 12 financials. So just get their P&L for the last year. And I, you can ask for the rent rolls, but you don't need them. In fact, we throw the rent rolls away when we see them. Because Cause the rent rolls can be what? They could be anything. They can be anything, but it's just a summary of what the leases say. Right. Right. And I, I would tell you that most of the folks who are doing these duplexes, triplexes, and quads are self-managing. Right. And they probably don't have a rent roll. And so I'm just trying to keep it to the two things. Leases and the trailing 12, you get those two things, that should be sufficient financials for whoever is going to buy it on the back end. Yeah, let's, let me take this question from Deandra, actually. So so we approach it like regular wholesaling deals we normally do, but the difference really comes in with the property evaluation. So one leases, two expenses financials for the last 12 months. We're going we're gonna to take rent rolls off the table, right? So guys, leases and the financials for and expenses and financials, so that's going to be in the financials, right? of the property for the last 12 months. This is extremely important because whether you're going to hold it yourself or if you're going to wholesale it, any good cash buyer is going to want this information. And so guys, when you're doing these direct to seller strategies, it's extremely important to set proper expectations when you're talking to sellers up front. Because if you don't know what you need, and this is why we're telling you exactly what you need, because if you don't know what you need, when you then go try to evaluate the deal later, sell the deal and then now your buyer is asking for these things you're going to look to the seller like you don't have a handle on what's going on all right so we got it right here leases expenses the financials for the last 12 months all right so morgan jumped in and she said what if they don't have a pnl it's a good question and what i will tell you morgan is the if they don't have their financials in order then they're not very sophisticated or they're trying to fleece you so but but jerome for me, that, that's, those are buzzwords for me when they don't have something like that, right? Because that means it's negotiating. And you know how much I love to negotiate, all right? You know this person, all right? It's, it's, go, it's go time. It's go time. If they, don't have, if they don't have the paperwork, guys, all right, that's that's what we call, and Jerome and I had this conversation a lot, this is leverage and positioning, all right? So when somebody does not have these things, if so, listen, if somebody doesn't have copies of the leases, if somebody doesn't have a P&L they can show you for the property. Jerome, what does that tell you? 
they're not organized, bro. Like I said, they lack the sophistication, and this is where we got the opportunity to drop down the price, right? Well, you know, if you don't have a profit and loss statement for the last year, then it's going to be really difficult for me to analyze this. And so I'm going to have to negatively evaluate the property because of that. I just have to make an adjustment because it's unknown. It's just unknown. And so maybe if I wanted to pay 30000 for the unit, now I got to take it back to twenty five or twenty, Right. And just because I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on at the property. I don't know if you actually collect their rent. And, you know, that is just the, their issue. And what you'll find out is they'll come up with something because they oh. had to file taxes. Right. They had to file taxes and the property, anytime they go through their tax return, they're going to have a P&L in it. So it's there. They got it. Profit yeah. and loss statement. Yeah, there it is, guys. Profit and loss uh, speaks to the finances uh, of the property. Deandra's on top of this stuff, right? She, she might be a multifamily wizard. All right. And so, uh, so all right. So let me ask you this, right? So I'll, I'm going to go back to the triplex a little bit. So um, how did, what was the, tell, tell me about the numbers on that deal. So how did you look at it and know once you got into that negotiation phase, you got the, you got the paperwork that you requested from the seller. Right. How did you look at it and evaluate it? What were the numbers? How did you determine your offer? Talk to me about that. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep it super simple, right? And this goes back to you got to understand your market. And so I think he wanted, I think he wanted 120 for the triplex and a single family home, something like that. I need and to get down to Cape bro, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I backed out the single family. It was like, I can't pay you that much. So we whittled it back. I put them under contract for 90000 And so, well, Jerome, how'd you pick 90000 Is They were two bedroom, one baths. And I know that that sells for fifty to around $50,000 per unit in my market. And so what I felt was if I can buy it for thirty, I can sell it for forty per door. So you gotta multiply that by three, guys. This is how we got to the thirty grand. So I put him on a contract at ninety thousand and then I tuck it to a cash buyer at one twenty. He negotiated with me, I think I tucked like three thousand off. He bought it for like one seventeen and we did we didn't even we didn't even we did a double close. Oh, okay. All right. So you, so you do a double close, uh, and the beautiful thing I like about what you're saying, and I love this uh, thought of, and this might be a new Jerome here, just, just keeping it simple, right? Jerome is, because you, you're one of the smartest people I know, right? And, and I, love the, I love how, and this, was, this is what makes you a good teacher and the people that you're helping with multifamily and the people yeah. you're inspiring to get into multifamily is, you know, part of teaching is one thing that I know myself from teaching so many people is that you got to be able to explain things so that people can grasp it and understand it. And so I love this concept of, because it's the same as my concept in evaluating single family properties, right? It's, it's, we don't have to, we don't got to go crazy and have a bunch of spreadsheets throwing numbers in and da, 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 da. Guys, the money is in data and understanding the data of your market. All right. If your market, if you're monitoring your market on a daily basis, like we talked about earlier and paying attention to what stuff is going for, Jerome knew the triplexes are going for about 130. They're going for, you said what, 40,000 a door or 50,000 a door. And you want to give somebody a deal. You want to leave meat on the bone as a good wholesaler or investor should do. Yeah. And I talked to you guys about this. You don't have to do deals and try to take all the profit out of the deal. You want to, you want to leave profit for your cash buyers. This is what makes them want to buy from you again. All right. So Jerome could have sold it for 50,000 a door and tried to hit yeah. 150 on it. Right. But he said, listen, I want to make sure that I provide a great deal to my cash buyer. I'm OK making a little bit less and moving this thing a little bit quicker. Right. And so you said, look, I'll do 40,000 a door. But he knew this because he paid attention to what deals sold for in his market. And guys, if you're monitoring your market on a daily basis, all Jerome is doing is taking the uh, total sales price that you see a duplex, triplex or quad sold for in your market. And he's dividing that by the number of units to determine how much it's sold for per door. That's it. And when you talk multifamily, Jerome, people don't talk about overall sales price. They talk a lot about what is it per door. Right. And I think the per door, if you want to go back and use the 1% rule or the 2% rule to figure out what people can pay for it, you absolutely can do that. But I don't think that's as important as knowing what we call price per pound, right? right. Price per door is kind of the holy grail. And the other piece of this, Chris, is 
look, if I buy it at 30, I sell it to him at 40, market is 50, he now has $10,000 per door where he can go into the unit and renovate, right? And I can show him, oh, by the way, I got the leases, right? The leases, they were at 475, well, market rent was 650. So he's got 175 where he can move rent over the course of a few years. And he's actually executing against that business plan. And so he walks in with 30K of equity, and then he's gonna add another 30K or so when it's all said and done, just by bumping the rents, by getting to the back end and actually getting sophisticated. And that's when we can get complicated. And this is what I'll say, like we can dumb it down for this front side because you're not actually executing the business plan. You're just right. finding the deal and transitioning it to somebody who's going to execute the flip. Let's, let's yeah. call it a flip, right? But the person who's flipping really needs to understand what it means when you can increase rents by $175 per door and yeah. how much money you can actually spend on the property in order to get that $175 per door. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think something too is, here's one thing that's different about single family and multifamily. The abundance of deals in multifamily for cash buyers is much, much less. The value in having a deal that's a good deal is tremendous in multifamily. Right. All right, it, it obviously it's going to be good in single family too, but in my opinion, the value of the deal is actually higher in multifamily because they're, they can be harder to come by, and that's what makes this direct to seller model so beautiful. And so. Yeah. Guys, you can do different things with cash buyers. And this, I want to make the point because I, I really love what you did, Jerome, by leaving meat on the bone for your cash buyer. I talk to my students all the time about not being greedy on deals, not trying to hit home runs constantly on profits. Because what Jerome could do, all right, is he could create a relationship with that cash buyer who's obviously buying multifamily properties. All right. And there's a lot of leverage in having an asset. Now you have the ability to have a conversation. Maybe Jerome would have said, maybe. All right. Hey, you know what? Instead of selling it to you for 40 a door, I'll give it to you at 35. I'll just take five a door. And if you give me a 5% writer of equity in the deal. All right. Because the value, the, you get a piece of, you got, now you got 5% of ownership in multifamily. And Jerome, you know, a funny thing. I think I've said this to you before. You know what happens when you own multifamily? I hear people, because people will say, man, I got a portfolio of 500, 1,000, 1,500, whatever. All right. You know what nobody ever asks? How much do you own? It? How much do you own? How much <laughs> of those 500,000 units do you actually own? Right? Nobody asked that question. And so, guys, this is how you can get yourself into multifamily deals by being a good steward for the market, finding great quality multifamily deals. Because these guys, you know, they don't got the T-shirts and hats like me and Jerome. Right? Jerome, we know these guys, right? They might be on here, right? They're, they're suited up, the, the Brooks Brothers, right? Men's warehouse suits, right? They're in the office all day. They're playing golf, right? Yeah. They're not. They're not out in the trenches. They're not looking at PLs on the front end, chasing down sellers, creating deal opportunities. They're not. They're not doing that, right? So there's value in bringing the deal guys to the table, right? A drum, have you ever done that, by the way, just leveraged bringing a deal to the table to get equity inside of a deal? Oh, I mean, that's what we're doing on the development, right? I love it. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, it's my deal. You know, I've got my partner. I mean, I'll, I'll tell the folks here. I mean, it's a $17 million deal, right? When it's all said and done, right? And we rezoned it. We were putting a team together and... They're bringing their resources with us to get the deal done, joint venture style. And you, and you leverage you leverage your ability to go out, find and analyze deals to get equity opportunities inside of the JV relationship. Right. I'm going to say this again for the people in the back because this is some cold, cold game right here. All right. I'm going to say this one more time. You can leverage finding deals in multifamily Jerome's doing it right now on a $17 million development. True. I don't even know how many zeros that is. I ain't even got that kind of money to know. Uh, right? I can't count but that. It's a <laughs> lot. Imagine counting 17 million. Jesus. All right. So, but he's, found, he's he knows how to find and analyze the deal. And he can take that and leverage it to the people who have money 
who need cash flow and deal opportunities. All right. So somebody said, my guy, Dante, done a lot of deals with this guy. Dante said he said he said it so humbly. All right. J Jerome's a humble guy. All right. And, and, and you should stay humble in this business. That's one of the things I love about Jerome. Jerome, here's the deal. We're going to have to do a part two. I know you're a very busy gentleman. All right. It's crazy. We've been you, trying to do this thing for months, man. Long time. I know you got your, your planner. You know what I mean? You're the calendar invite king. <laughs> All right. Me but not. I think we're going to need to do a part two because I, I, I think this is so important for the real estate community. Nobody's talking about this, like you said. No. Nobody's, nobody's having the conversations about how you can add multifamily into your business mm -hmm. and explode. And, and one of my goals was, and, and Jerome and I's core, core values in alignment. So I love this guy because what it is, is we people have watched us ascend to different spaces and do different types of deals and grow over the years and all these different things. And that's cool. But what's even cooler and what I love, and I know Jerome loves too, because I've seen what he's done for his community is creating the ability to explain this to you guys and not keep it from you. Right. Not, not make it some high level thing that, that it's not talked about because that's how it is right now. We want you guys to know and understand how to do these types of deals. So Jerome, we're going to set up because I want to get into some Q and a before we get out of here. All right. So, so we're going to set up and we don't know when, all right, but yeah. we're going to set up in the very near future. And you guys, I told you, I'm going to be on Jerome's back. <laughs> and very, and he knows it. He knows it. In the very near future, we're gonna do another one of these calls, and we're gonna we're gonna go as long as we need to. If that calls a two, three, maybe past, not just not maybe not past three. It's gonna be a, if it's a one, two, three hour call, we're gonna knock it out and get you guys the rest of the game on multifamily. But I want to answer some questions. I want Jerome to answer these questions. All there right. Go. They said they Jerome. They telling me they said bring them into the U. All right. They saying bring them into the U. <laughs> All right, guys, drop your questions for Jerome on multifamily, whatever the case might be. I'm going to get this guy to answer some questions. Uh, let's see. So is this raw land that you're developing? Absolutely. Yeah, in the opportunity zone. We're trying to do the whole thing, man. It not not trying. I mean, we're going through the process. We're doing the it, The package man. is coming. The package is going in next week to HUD. And the crazy part, so when you get to this level, let me, bro, all right. So we, we – <laughs> Let me just give the people this. I know where you're going. Go, go people, ahead. People, they don't, they don't get exposure to this. So we're doing a HUD loan. It's the 221 D4 loan. You can go look it up if you think I'm a liar. So we're going to get interest rate under 3%. It's going to be fully amortized for 40 years, and it's non-recourse the entire way. Mm. Explain non-recourse, please. Non-recourse means... For non -recourse, right? Non-recourse means... If it goes in a tank, it goes sideways, that they can't come after your personal assets. And what is a what is a HUD loan for the people so they can understand? What so, you know, housing and urban development does a few different type of loan products to incentivize developers to build certain types of communities. And it's a highly competitive process. And if you've never done one of those loans before, you can't get one. And so it's really like a fraternity or sorority. Somebody's got to bring you into the game. And so for me to have this property and be in a place where, you know, we're under contract and we're trying to take it to the next level, um, you know, we had to partner with a developer who had done these types of projects before. And so yeah. working and being consistent and diligent and creating a good name for yourself in the community is huge as you try to go to that next level because they're going to do their research. They're not going to place bets on folks who aren't doing good business. And, and this developer, uh, what was the most critical part that you would say you brought into the deal uh, that would made it attractive for that, that this big developer? Bro, okay, let, let me let me let me let me scoot up on the edge of the seat for this Bring because it in. here Bring it, it in. is, right? Every investor, regardless of where you are in the space, are dealing with four things: knowledge, deal flow, experience, and capital. Everybody talking about they don't have the capital to do the deals are out of order. This is the order you do it in. Knowledge, oh, deal wait, flow, this, this, experience, this is, wait, capital. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Guys, please, please get a pen and paper out and understand what this guy is telling you right now. This is a cold game, all right? This is a cold game. Please say it one more time, Jerome. One more time, right, for the people who weren't paying attention. Knowledge deal flow experience capital you don't need anything before you have the knowledge 
right? Once you have the knowledge, you become valuable because you can differentiate between leads and deals. Same letters, very different things, right? Leads is something that you just put out there, hope somebody buys, catch a sucker. You know, Chris, you remember that first deal you did where they'll sell it to you if you got the money to pay for it. That right. doesn't mean that you're going to make money. I lost but money. Deal is where you're going to make some money. So if you can figure out the difference between a lead and a deal, that's when you become valuable. And yeah. that's really just sweat, right? It's, you might spend some money on education to speed up the process, but then it's just sweat going through it. And what I will say is that's what made me valuable. I went in, I rezoned the property from 72 units to 120. And in that process and being in the right circles and in the right meetings, he was sitting in the same meeting as I was. And he said, look, I'm interested in learning more about what you got going on and seeing if we can actually make an investment there. And it was just an off chance that I happened to be at that meeting the day that he was there. But because I had a deal in hand and he understood the upside associated with that deal, he got interested. Oh, but man. it's my deal. I had it under contract. And this is the difference between being in the game and out of the game. And if we go back to the very beginning when I said the guy didn't want to do the deal with me, he tried to do it on his own. He went and asked Chris to help him out on the deal. And Chris said, I'm not doing the less rooms in the deal. If it was my contract, I would have been in the deal. You have to have the paperwork on the deal in order to have people to want to partner with you, unless you have the experience or the capital, right? You neither need a deal, experience, or capital to be invited into a deal. Otherwise, nobody needs you. And the reason why he didn't want to partner with me because I couldn't tell him which one of those three I had. Yeah. No, actually, man, hold up, man. You you just dropped. You just got, you just dropped some Jay Z level bars on me, right? That's it. So, so guys, let me. I want to reiterate this: knowledge and understanding of the deal, having the deal. Those are the two most critical pieces that you can put together right now without any capital. You don't have to have seventeen million dollars. All right, what you need to have is knowledge and the deal. Okay, yeah. dude, you told me this years ago, right? When we talked about your flipping business and I was like, why are you still wholesaling if you got this flipping and construction business? He's like, he who controls the deal. <laughs> controls hey, the market. Hey, 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 whoever got the deals, you control the market. And that's how you gain leverage inside of your market. See, I see people miss this. People are chasing everything but the actual knowledge and deal itself. Everybody's worrying about the wrong stuff. Everybody's, well, how do I find a private lender? Where do I get a loan from? How do I do this? It doesn't matter. It don't it matter. Does, it doesn't matter. The, get the a deal. deal. Yes. Get a deal and then find experience and then you'll find capital in multifamily. You got a single family. Together. You Good. can get away with the, with the lack of experience if you're selling it. But Chris, you know, just as well as me, most hard money lenders don't want to lend to somebody that doesn't have any experience to do a nope. flip. So... Everybody says, oh, if you got a great deal, the money will show up. No, you're going to need somebody with some experience. And this is why people are into you. Yeah. Right? So they can partner with somebody who has some experience to get the deal, the transaction done. Yep. That's the gap. But finding the deal makes you valuable. You can't manufacture experience. You got to come through with somebody who has it already. Yeah. No, I, I agree 110%, man. Guys, I emphasize to you so much the importance of going out and showing up for yourself in your business and finding deals, all right? And the other bar that Jerome dropped on you guys is he was in a meeting discussing the deal that he had under contract, all right? And this this big developer happened to be in that meeting at that time, all right? And at that moment, he heard Jerome talking about his opportunity, likely to somebody else, and then approached Jerome about getting involved in that deal because Jerome controlled the deal. That guy would have reached out to whoever had the deal under contract if right. it made sense and he wanted to be involved in it. But see, Jerome controlled the deal. So now this is this is how you force your way to the table. All right. I talk about this a lot. Jerome, you know my style. All right. You're going to have to feel me. You're going to have to deal with me. All right. Because I control the market. And so if you want to do business in the market I'm in, 
you you don't have to like me. We don't got to be best friends. Dumb. We don't got to hug every time we see each other. I control the contracts out here, man. You got to come see me. And so this is how you force your way to the table. And Dumb. this is how you can leverage in the business to grow and do amazing, beautiful things. So let me let me see what else we got in here for questions. I see a good one here. Uh, and, and I know the answer. I want you to say it. Do you go direct to seller with multifamily or use more brokers? Man, if you're using brokers for your <laughs> deals, you're on the wrong call, right? It, the values in being direct to seller, everything that a broker is selling should be at retail price. If yep. not, then the person who signed the listing agreement is getting fleeced. You you want you want to be you can't be leisurely in the business. This is the active part of it, right? You get the knowledge and then you go find the deals. This is where you add the value. Man, it's COVID out here, bro. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta zoom it out, man. We you're gonna have to get back in on the live when we get this thing rescheduled. We're gonna do a part two. And with the part two guys, we're gonna run the part two long. We're gonna get into even this like we're right now, Jerome. We're scratching surface. the surface. Surface. This game is so crazy. What, and, and guys, what we're doing, you're, you're luck, looking at and, talk, and, and talking with or listening to two guys that some would say crack the code on this. But what it really is in reality is we've, all, we've both failed a lot. And we've learned from that failure, some of it together. Real right? Spell. Some of the failure together. And we've learned from that failure and what we're trying to do is give you all that game that we've taken time over the last 10 years to figure out so that you guys don't have to deal with the failure. All right. And you guys can take it and implement it into your business. It's like I say all the time, the first man through the door gets shot. We've already Real. walked through that door. We've already taken those hits. Jerome, you know that, right? We've Real. taken hits. All right. We've taken those hits because we want to show the real estate community. We want to be able to show people exactly how you can turn this thing up how you can insert this into your business and really go crazy and, and, and really do some amazing things. Uh, so let's answer a couple quick more questions uh, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, so you rezoned it before you had financing in place. Absolutely. I do it every time. Right. So just just to put things in perspective. So we got this thing under contract at a number. I can't tell you the number, but we had a half a million by rezoning it the valuation on it. So we just got the appraisal back two weeks. That's ago. a different game. That's and, and that's a lot of money in that game too. Just rezoning. Just and rezoning. Flipping it. Yeah. We're gonna have to say that for yeah. that's that's some ice cold game right there. That's a big money ice cold game right there. We're gonna save that. Uh we'll get that on the next one. We'll get that on the next one. Let me see what else we got real quick. Morgan, uh, no, I let, let me just give Morgan this last piece. No. Please, please, please. I had every intention of building this. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but we were going to figure it out. And I think this is the thing my mom told me when I was a kid. She said, start pushing your car instead of sitting in a car with the flashers on. And I guarantee you somebody will get out and help you if your car breaks down. And so okay. just start pushing your car. Jerome, I want you to do something for me because I want people to be able to follow you. All right. And absorb uh, because, you know, that. We're going to be it's going to be a couple of weeks before we get back on here. I want people to go ahead and be able to see your content, see some of the different things that you're doing. Can you do me a favor? Can you type in the comments how they can follow you on IG so I can put it up on the screen so everybody has that. And while you're doing that, I got to read this because this is this. I was going to bring this up. I'm glad somebody commented and said it because this is one of them bars, man. This is another one of them bars. I might have to add this one to my repertoire. All right. Put this in my in my in my in my pocket. Lead verse deal. Same letters, very different words. All day. Bro. Man. You got to do the math every now and again. Sometimes it's algebra. It got letters in it. I love that, man. I love that. I love that. Um, my guy, Nate Phillips, Dallas, Texas, Cowboys are trash. They don't want y'all giving away this game. And here's the thing. They don't. We know that they don't. We're both okay with it. Because we want to see people grow in this business. We want to see people win in this business. And because what's happened, Jerome, is see the people at the top, some of the, some of those rooms that we get to sit in every once in a while, all right? Some of those rooms we get the pleasure of sitting in, see, they don't want y'all to know this shit. That's the truth. They don't want you to know the stuff that we're talking about right now. 
This is because where real wealth is built, bro. This where this wealth is, is not a single family home. This is doubles, triples, singles. I mean, think about it. How many of y'all can actually go do a deal, a wholesale deal, and make thirty thousand right now? Just one deal, right? It's the same. It's the same contract, right? You're doing one contract. It's yep. one transaction. But you're multiplying it by three or four times, depending on what you're getting on your wholesale fees. Nah, absolutely, man. We're going to get ready to get out of here. Guys, this will be up on my YouTube. Jerome, did you post your... So I can only put it on the private chat, so I had to give it to you. You got to drop it down okay, on it I got you, I got you, I got you. Let me figure out. Jerome, you know I'm not a computer guy. Oh, here's the private chat. All right, here we yeah. go. Let me get I, this for I you. I couldn't get anything in the comments. I'm not... I don't have, I'm not fancy enough. Not spicy, not spicy. I get it, I get it. I got your back, man, you know it. Here we go. Let me get this, let me get this up on the screen because I want people to be able to go follow you and check you out. Guys, you can follow Jerome right here, all right? Go follow this guy. I'm telling you right now, go follow this guy. Check out what he's doing. I mean, this guy's highly intelligent. He's got the multifamily game dialed in. I've, I've watched this guy. All right. How long have I been? What seven, eight years? Bro, we did it. What, what was the far drive? We back. In like I think that's eight years, bro. That's eight years. I believe. 2012, 2013. Yeah, far that's drive. There they go. I mess, remember. I messed up. I painted the house pastel green. <laughs> remember, I called you. I turned the corner. I came in the neighborhood. What is that? But it's Easter green house, and I'm like, I just paid like I think like seven thousand to paint it. I had to paint it over. Cause it looks so crazy, man. Uh, salute to you, man. I, I appreciate you having my back, man. Much love to you. Uh, I want you to close it a long game. Jerome, talk to me, man. Look, man, your dream should be real. And that's how I close everything. If your dreams, look, there's somebody out there who's counting on you to do the thing that you were put on this earth to do. And if you choose not to do it, you're going to prevent them from doing this. Chris opened this up, said before 2019, I, I never saw this guy. Right, I couldn't find them on the internet anywhere. I pull up yeah. on them at a property, but there was no face post anywhere. And the problem was, I felt like I was holding people back. Right, I wasn't showing anybody that they could be out there in the space doing this. If you, I, I was just in Business Insider for our four step process for buying multifamily properties. Right, Ooh. I was just in. You don't see people who look like me in Business Insider talking about investing in real estate. And so I was doing the community a disservice by not sharing the message. And so just like me, you who are out there having success, you got to tell the people what's going on gotcha. because there's abundance. There's more out there than you can ever buy. I can't buy every property I want to buy. Right. Yeah. And you can't either. So there is no re you're not in competition with anybody out here. The deals that are for you are for you and they're going to be for you. So we need more people who are engaged in this and really trying to take things to the next level and i'll be honest with you guys like everything that we share with you tonight you should have been charged for that's right? real you can't get this free type of content anywhere everybody asking how do i calculate offers this that and the third like you can go pay for that and you can get it right now but a lot of people don't actually want to make that level of investment for that type of education. The education is what makes you valuable because, again, you can evaluate the difference between leads and deals. Yes. They are the same letters but very different words. And so if you're willing to make that knowledge investment, you'll make – think about it, man. The you spent hundred. You probably spent $100,000 on education over the years, oh. right? Oh, yeah. And so with that said – but how much money have you made on the backside of that, right? You got to see that it's an investment. I've been blessed, man. I've been, I've been blessed. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll leave it there, guys. Like, the free game is great, but you got to be willing to make an investment in yourself because you know that on the backside, you're going to be able to take that, apply it, and turn it into more revenue. Yeah, and I want to piggyback that real quick before we wrap this up. Guys, so I love free content. I think free content is great. And I, I, I give you – when I do content for y'all – I, I give you everything that I can give you, all right? But I pay for education to this day, all right? And the reason I do that is because, again, I want to move towards things as fast as possible, all right? And Jerome told you what you need. He told you exactly what you need. You need knowledge. And so if I need knowledge, I need to move towards it as quickly as possible. I need that information. 
and then you need deals. So you got to put yourself in position to get both. Uh, to Facebook user, do you have videos on how to calculate offers? I'm sure he's got that inside his program. We're not even talking about his program. We're no. just putting you guys up on game. But here's here's what you can do. All right, you can. I want you to go on Google or go on Bigger Pockets, and I want you to look up the one percent rule. All right, and you got to figure out for your market. Some markets is one percent. Some markets is two percent. Figure out what that applies to you for your market, and you can figure out an offer on a multifamily in, in a couple of seconds. All right. Uh, all you need is a, is a calculator. You don't even got to be a TI-83. All right. Uh, we're going to get ready to get out of here. Um, Jerome, listen, we're going to do this again. I'm going to bug you and bother you. All right. To make that happen. All right. I need I need the people want you to commit. We don't got a date. The people want you to commit that we're going to get this done again. We're going to run it as long as we need to to make sure people have the game on this. Man, we probably gonna have to do one of those Saturday sessions that you used to do. We're gonna get it. Let's get into it. Get the whiteboard out. You know, I let somebody the whiteboard. bring some deals in and just go through it because I mean, we could get like I said. There's some people who are on the front end. They just want to get the lead so they can flip it to somebody else. Right. But there's probably some people on this call. You said it was like 70 folks on, right? Like who. Who who want to take it all the way through? They don't want to flip it to somebody else, and that's where the real wealth begins to build. And so we can walk them through the back end, so they can get the more sophisticated stuff. I love it, man. All right, look, we're gonna get out of here, Jerome. Much love to you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for me personally. Thank you for everything you're doing for the real estate community. Uh, I, I love seeing it. We've seen each other grow over the last yeah. eight years. Uh, we've seen each other through some serious, serious struggles. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we can we're, we're both cut from that cloth of uh, 10 toes down, man. Keep it pumping. Keep moving forward and uh, make this thing happen, man. So I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you very soon. Y'all go follow my guy right now. All right, brother. Appreciate you. Talk soon. All right, bro. Peace.